Thanks to the success of U.S. oil companies engaged in hydraulic fracturing or fracking, a process used to extract oil trapped in shale formations, the United States will soon pass Saudi Arabia as the world's largest oil producer. Both Saudi Arabia and the United States passed Russia for the top spot in recent years. The Economist reported on February 15th that U.S. oil produ production reached a peak of 9.6 million barrels per day in 1970, then declined to less than 5 million uh, BPD in 2008. About that time, independent oil producers began adapting the new technologies of hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling, which had previously been used to tap natural gas found in shale to reach shale oil. Since fracking was introduced, U.S. oil production has risen to 7.4 million BPD, and the U.S. Energy Information Administration, EIA, predicts that U.S. production will return to 1970 levels by 2019. The International Energy Agency has used production projection that the United States will displace Saudi Arabia as the world's largest oil producer by 2015. By 2020, notes a report uh, in investing daily, the United States will produce 11.6 million barrels per day. During the same period, Saudi Arabia output is expected to fall from 11.7 million BPD to 10.6 million BPD. The American Energy Edge, an essay in the March-April issue of Foreign Affairs, the Journal for the Council of Foreign Relations, Robert D. Blackwell and Megan L. O'Sullivan noted that during the past five years, U.S. energy producers have taken advantage of two new technologies, horizontal drilling, which allows wells to penetrate bands of shale deep underground and hydraulic fracturing or fracking which uses the injection of high pressure fluids to release gas and oil from rock formations. Blackwell and O'Sullivan continue, the resulting uptick in energy production has been dramatic. Between 2007 and 2012, U.S. shale gas production rose by over 50 percent each year and its share of total U.S. gas production jumped from 5% to 39%. Between 2007 and 2012, fracking also generates an 18-fold increase in U.S. production, of which is known uh, as light, tight oil, high-quality petroleum found in shell or sandstone that can be released by fracking. This boom has succeeded in re reversing the long decline in U.S. crude oil production, which grew by 50% between 2008 and 2013. Thanks to these developments, the US, United States is now poised to become an energy superpower. At the heart of this story is a technique that has been used so successfully to increase US oil production, fracking, the popular term for which scientists call hydraulic fracturing. Basically, hydraulic fracturing is the fracturing of rock, in this case shale containing oil, by a pressurized liquid. Water mixed with sand and chemicals is injected at high pressures into a borehole, produce small fracturings in the shell, allowing natural gas or oil to seep into the well from which it is extracted. As was noted in biographical sketch about George Mitchell, who pioneered fracking, posted by the New American last July 29th, fracking is being used to access natural gas and oil in uh, Marcellus, New York and Pennsylvania, Haynesville, Arkansas, Louisiana and East Texas, Barnett, North Texas and Oklahoma, and Utica, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, Maryland, Tennessee, Virginia and or Ontario and Quebec in Canada. Shell band beds along with bacon formation in North Dakota. Fracking technology has increased production so much that it has made North Dakota into one of the most prosperous states in the union. I've, uh, I've thought of actually going there and being a roughneck. But it is mainly the increased production in North Dakota and Texas that will enable the United States to displace Saudi Arabia as the world's top oil producer. As of 2013, the bacon formation produced more than 10% of you all U.S. oil. In November 2013, the U.S. Energy Information Administration pro projected that bacon production in North Dakota and Montana would exceed 1 million barrels per day in December of 2013, 
making North Dakota the second largest oil producing state in the United States behind Texas. Britain's independent newspaper reported on March 2000, of March 12th that Texas is currently producing 3 million barrels of oil a day, most of it from fracking in two huge shale fields. The article noted that by next year, Texas oil production will rise to 4 million barrels per day, more than the United Arab Emirates, Iraq, and Iran. If Texas were a nation, notes the writer, it would already be the ninth largest oil producer in the world. The success of the oil boom resulting from fracking is not without its usual critics among environmental how, uh, environmentalists. However, a leading anti-fracking measure is in the works in Colorado. In January 2014, the Colorado Community Rights Network, CCRN, submitted ballot language for a proposed amendment to Colorado constituting that constitution that would give municipalities the right to ban or regulate fracking and any other industrial activity, such as factory farming and hazardous waste disposal within their borders. If the language is approved by the Secretary of State, the group will collect signatures to get the measure on the fall ballot. The amendment already highlights two separate issues. First, local rule, which even the most conservative constitutionalists tend to regard as a good thing. The other consideration, however, is that the target... <laughs> I like how the article is like distinguishing that constitutionalists and conservatives, conservatism is uh, some, somehow opposed that's ridiculous. Like, like the liberals really love conserv uh, constitutionalism. Uh, that's, that's just ridiculous. The other consideration, however, is that the target of this home rule is a private enterprise sure to benefit Colorado's economy simply because in action is constitutional does not, not always mean it is wise or well motivated. Energy producers in Colorado are confident that the anti-fracking measure will fail, however. When Reuters News asked Jack Ekstrom, a Whiting Petroleum Company executive and incoming chair of the Western Energy Alliance, an industry advocacy group, if his company planned to fight back, he replied, Are we willing to fight? You bet we are. If you ask me, if I'm concerned, the answer is no. Our intent is to grow here, not shrink. Another oil industry advocate interviewed by Reuters, uh, Tisha Connolly Schuler, President of the Colorado Oil and Gas Association, a group that is challenging local fracturing bans, said, We're confident that common sense and economic certainty is going to prevail in the end. That's why you don't see energy companies changing their investment strategy in Colorado. Colorado Governor John uh, Hickenlooper, that's a name for you, a Democrat who will run for re-election this November, is expected to talk about the ballot me uh, measure at this week's IHS Zero Week conference in Houston, an annual meeting of global energy leaders. While he has not indicated how he stands on the measure, the venue suggests that he, he will not take a position opposed to the energy industry hosting the event. <laughs> and since uh, Hickenlooper uh, worked as a geologist for Backham Petroleum in the early 1980s, he does have a background in the oil industry. The U.S. oil industry has responded with many innovation, uh, innovative techniques to provide for American energy needs, including building the transatlantic pipeline system, building offshore drilling platforms, and using fracking to vastly increase oil production. Each of these methods has come under heavy attack by the more extreme segments of the environmental lobby. While every individual with common sense wants to protect our environment from harmful effects, shutting down energy is not necessary to protect the environment. Our free enterprise system provides both the incentive and the know-how to create affordable, plentiful energy that is environmentally friendly. I want you to go back to the 1800s during uh, or the uh, height of the Industrial Revolution, and I want you to see how money and the free market system automatically led to better, cleaner, everything. It wasn't the EPA that did that. The free market system does that automatically. As the workers and the citizens complain, the industrialists 
figure out a way to both make a profit and have clean industry. It's it's by design. It's ingrained in. If you read Adam Smith's book Wealth of Nations, you will understand that all of these progressions happen because we have more money. The more money we make, the more idle time we have to think about things above and beyond just making a profit. The workplace has become safer. That's not because of OSHA and the EPA. That's because the free market is working as intended. Capitalists care about the people working for them by design. Left to the free market under a capitalistic system, wages automatically increase. As competition increases, and we don't have Washington saying that you need this fee, that fee, or what have you, automatically competitors vie for workers. As the workers become more skilled, the competition for that worker increases. What does that not mean? That does not mean if you are a zero skill worker that they're going to compete for you. Unless there's only a few zero skilled workers. If your numbers are small, and here we have the illegal immigration question. But we don't even need to get to the illegal immigration question because so many people in the United States are out of work. The entire illegal immigration thing is being forced upon us. It's not that companies are wanting to hire these people. It's because the, it is being forced upon us. Oh, you should hire illegal immigrants because what is the propaganda? Illegal immigrants work for less. That is complete hogwash. And if and if it even if it is true, it's being forced on us. Why? Because of the minimum wage system. If companies are saying that they're going to pay ten dollars a minimum wage, who is that going to help? More than likely, it's going to help the illegal immigrant. Because at the end of the day, who would you rather hire? Somebody for ten dollars, who you have to cater to and, and do this and that for, or somebody that you hire for ten dollars, whom you can do anything to and who will never report you to anybody. If we're talking about the very bottom, 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 bottom worker, you're going to hire the legal alien because the illegal alien doesn't complain. You can work an illegal, illegal alien for 60 hours and only pay them 40 hours. Truth. An American person, you have to pay all 40 hours for 40 hours worked. 60 hours for 60 hours worked. It's the American government and the regulations that are in the way. When we come in here, we have the environmentalists that I suspect are part of the New World Order. They want to destroy your ability to make money. And they say, oh, this this is wrong, this is wrong, that is wrong. We have it on record that the EPA does things counter to the actual living standard of the people in the population. And as far as fracking is concerned, there is a complete debate, a complete disagreement on the one hand, you have the EPA type of people who say fracking is terrible and horrible and you have gas in your water and this and that happened. You have everything is terrible and awful and, the, it, 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 and it destroys the environment. Oh, and it causes sinkholes that appear. On the other side of it, you have scientists who have actually gone to state by state, city by city, have tested the water, has tested everything and has done historical documentation and says anything that is present now was present in the 60s, 50s, and 40s. If you have gas in your water, that's because you've had gas in your water for 80, 90, 100 years. Not from fracking. Fracking is not that old. If you have uh, a decimated area in the environment, that has been decimated before fracking ever came onto the scene. It's the documentation. The other side of the debate is that it is documented that it's not caused by fracking. And for the people who disbelieve, you can actually see that the EPA documentation agrees with that side of the argument. But they'll come out and uh, spread propaganda that it's all fracking. You know, when they talk to you, they'll spread propaganda about, us, about fracking. But if you go to the EPA and look for the actual documentation, it will show you that fracking is not the cause of any environmental problems in the various cities and states and what have you. I think the EPA should be completely disbanded and if they're proposing legislation to put into the state constitution that the people can ban fracking, which has taken America 
from fifth place to first place and making America energy completely independent, then there is something far more sinister going on than this uh, uh, wish to have this up utopian environmental area. And it seems that it is in league with Agenda 21. Thank you for watching the Shikama Live Show. Please give me a thumbs up for doing all of this research. <laughs> Thank you.